now requires all schools to have a silent panic button system in place in order to cut down response time for police or fire in an emergency event such as an active shooter? You didn't know that, or maybe you did. Either way, you don't wanna break the law, so whatever shall we do? Oh, I know. <laughs> Safer Watch app, mobile panic buttons, and yes, I make my own sound effects. Whether it be an active shooter, medical emergency, crime in progress, or a fire or explosion, once I've pressed the Safer Watch mobile panic buttons, it will send all of my emergency profile information and GPS location straight to the dispatch center and to nearby patrolling first responders. That means you won't have to waste precious time on the phone giving out all the information that first responders need to properly respond to your location. Like your name, what you're wearing, location of the event, any weapon, first aid, what's your blood type, what's your what's telephone number, number? How what floor of the building you? are you on? Imagine shrinking down all that information and putting it into one button. Well, bam, here it is. This is phenomenal for schools and it meets the requirements for the Alyssa Law. But not only is it for schools, it's also for places of worship, government buildings, workplaces, different organization, events, and other locations. So with all that being said, you got one question to ask yourself. Does my school or workplace have these amazing buttons that can save lives by drastically cutting down response time? by first responders. If the answer is no, then you need to get on. You can start by visiting www.saferwatchapp.com. Once you're there, forward that information to your boss or your principal and let her know you need to get the Safer Watch mobile panic buttons now. All right, let's see if there's a button on here to get back to the video. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of Police Cars. I don't know if you noticed the palm trees, the sand, the water, the boat way back there. I don't know if you can see it. You probably could tell by the opening scene. We are back at Fort Lauderdale Police Department. Last season we were here, we checked out their awesome Jeep. And during that, we had a little Easter egg in there. I don't know if you remember. What is this? Hey, everything okay? Oh, Sergeant, good, man. Thank you. Oh. What do you guys got going on over here at Fort Lauderdale? We're doing Fort Lauderdale. We got to do another video with that. Is that cool? We'll get you one of those. So here we are, season two, and we're back to check out those awesome motors. So without further ado, let's go. Take a look at these guys here. Wow! Fort Lauderdale Police came through yet again. Hey, how you doing? Say what's up to the Nod Squad. What's up, Nod Squad? Officer Jason Wilson here. Hey, how many years you been in motors? Six years on motors. Six years on motors. And let's debate this gentleman right here. What's up, Nod Squad? Officer George Mara. Been on motors 12 years. 12 years. So guys, we got a wealth of knowledge right here and uh, they're gonna run us down these awesome machines. Guys, usually uh, we do, we go to different locations throughout the police cars. So I'm seeing some kind of uh, a problem here. I wanna know which one of you guys is gonna let me ride two man with you, huh? Oh no, not huh? today. Not no? today, that's not a negative. Today. Come on man, I can go in the back there, you got plenty of room back there. No? 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 Uh, I don't think so. All right, I guess, uh, guess we're gonna have to go with Casey over here. Say what's up, Casey. What's up, Nod Squad? All right. Today, guys, because uh, the lack of 
uh, two manisms or two officerisms, whatever you want to call it. I don't know if that's a word. I'm going to have to ride with Casey, but that's cool. That's cool. We're going to go tour the city and check out these awesome bikes. All right, so a little movie magic. We we're doing some B-roll, uh, getting them driving out of the parking lot. The uh, motorman over here being social. So uh, is this like a good like community outreach tool? Absolutely, that's an everyday thing. Um, we bring these out in the community. Everybody likes what they look like. Everybody wants to ask questions about them. And it's a great part of community policing. Uh, helps us build a relationship between us and the community. Do you, do, you, do you allow them to sit on here? I saw somebody taking pictures and stuff. Absolutely. No, a lot of people want to take pictures with them, with us, and uh, we even allow people to sit on top of the bikes and take pictures with them, take them back home to their friends. Nice. But nobody gets to ride two men. No. Okay. So we've brought you here to the heart of our city. It's our downtown area. Behind me here is the New River Canal. It's 165 miles of waterways that connect the different areas of the city to the downtown area, Fort Lauderdale, which is also known as the Venice of America. Oh, I can see by on your patch there, it even says it. Yes, we do have that on our insignia. All right, Jason, so can you run us down? So what we have here is our 2017 Can-Am Spider. Um, from front to back, you'll notice it looks a little bit differently than our regular motorcycles. Uh, this doesn't have two wheels like your traditional motorcycle. It actually has three, two wheels in the front and one in the rear. Um, it's got a nice dark black color to it with subdued riding with the Fort Lauderdale Police logo on it as well as our badge. From front to back, you'll notice that we have a windshield just like a normal motorcycle, handlebars just like a normal motorcycle. And with the two wheels, it doesn't lean like a normal motorcycle. It actually turns more like an ATV or a snowmobile would. So right here, attached to the handlebars, there is actually our control panel. This is where we have all the lights, uh, the siren, and all the other features that the motorcycle has. This is where we control all those features. We'll actually talk about those a little bit later on. As we work our way back, um, you actually see the motor number. All of our vehicles actually have motor numbers on them. As you go back, we have our gas tank up front, our seat. One of the benefits to this vehicle is it is actually a lot more comfortable than a general motorcycle. It's got a nice backrest here and the way that the rider sits in it is a lot more comfortable from what we're doing the long escorts and parades and stuff that we do that we primarily use these for. Um, we also have our storage back here. Uh, we have three large boxes in the back. Um, this is where we generally keep our computer in the middle storage box and then we'll keep documents, our laser, radar and other items like that in our side boxes. I've noticed that George hooked us up and he's got it open already. Can we check it out? Yeah, absolutely. We can come take a look inside his, take a look at some of the tools we use to do our job. So inside the box back here, you'll notice that he's got his computer set up inside the pouch here. The computer flips over easy, open easily for him to use. And then underneath that, we have our printer, which is where we print out any documents that we need to print out while we're out here in the field. It's like a mobile office for us. So we also have our side bags here. Uh, you can see he's got a jump pack and a jacket in this one. And over here, he actually has his laser, laser on top, which we use for traffic enforcement. All right. Florida, 3 p.m. typically always rains, eh? Yes. So that you can was. Set your watch by on most days. Yeah. So it's a must. Is that rain jacket, huh? Yes, yeah. absolutely. So speaking of the rain jacket, one of the nice things about the Can-Am is we actually have additional storage that we don't have on our normal motorcycles. Nice. In this Can-Am here, you'll see that it has a trunk in the front of it, and this is where the rain gear is kept in this vehicle. I got a problem. Usually, I do a tour of the outside of the vehicle and then a tour of the inside of the vehicle. However, I think we just 
uh, did both at the same time. So, why don't we just jump right to the light show? Sounds good. You that guys, sounds great. I have the perfect place for it. You got somewhere we can go? Absolutely. It's a brand new garage uh, just down Los Olas. And it's a nice parking garage, good shade. You'll be able to see the lights perfect in there. Nice. Who am I riding with? You or. Her? Okay. All right. <laughs> Well, this is a uh, 2017 Can-Am Spider, and it was modified for police work. So on this cluster here, you've got your, your lights. The lights are all the way around 360. So this way you have safety no matter where you're looking at the bike. As you come around the back, you'll see that we've got lights everywhere. We put them nice and high for safety reasons, just like on the motorcycle. Come around, you'll see the lights are everywhere. Running lights always stay on on the fenders. And once you activate the uh, actual running uh, motor, you're gonna have these headlights turn on also. And you've got your strobe all in the front corners. So the way we activate our lights, normally in a patrol car, you're gonna have a, a light box and you're gonna switch your toggles. Here, they were made more comfortable so you can just keep your hand on the steering wheel and yet you can activate your lights. This will activate your lights. Above it is your siren and the last one at the top is your wheel. All right guys, this is the siren's test. If you're wearing headphones at a loud volume, if you have any small children sleeping at home, now is the time you might want to turn down the volume. All right, he's going to test out the sirens. the video here at Joseph C. Carter Park. It's right there in case you guys didn't see it. So as two seasoned veteran motormen, right, I would like to get your your thoughts, your pros and cons on riding one of these Can-Am Spiders around as a, as a motor. I know a lot of people in the comments are going to be commenting away whether they think they're good or bad, pros and cons, what they have to say, but let's hear it from the actual riders themselves. I don't think it necessarily has terrible bad or, or incredibly good. I think it's a different tool that we can use. But me personally, I like the fact that I've got something on the outside of my ankles to, for protection. I've got a lot more back support in case, uh, God forbid, I were to get uh, into an accident from the back, I can take a, a blow a lot quicker. It is a more stable platform, lower to the ground, less chance of it being tipped over or flipped or losing its traction because of the two stabilized front wheels. So for me, it's uh, it's got more pros than it does cons. All right, let's work our way over. So as George stated, there are a lot of very good points about this vehicle. And in this line of work, it's great to have a lot of different tools that we can use for different things that we do in this line of work. Um, that being said, I find that the regular motorcycle is a little more maneuverable. Um, for the certain jobs that we do, I still lean towards the regular motorcycle. But I do see the benefit of this for a lot of the events that we do, and it is a lot more comfortable. So there's definitely pros and cons to it, but it's a great tool for us to have within the agency. So overall, good tool, thumbs up. Good tool, good tool. Good tool. Good tool. Gentlemen, next question. How do I get to ride one of these bad boys? Well, that's a great question. Um, we get asked that question quite often, and the first step, of course, is to apply for the job. Wait, wait. Are you guys hiring? We are. As a matter of fact, you can find out about job availability for both certified and uncertified officer positions through our website, which can be found at... The website's flpdjobs.com. Love you. So guys, go over to flpdjobs.com so you guys can ride one of these. But once you get hired, 
I think there's a little bit more to it, so let's hear. Yeah, there is a little bit more to the process. Once you get hired and complete your probationary period, uh, you can show interest in the unit just by getting to know about it, meeting some of the people that are over here riding the motorcycles and the Can-Ams, letting them know you're interested. And when the opportunity comes up and an opening comes available, you put in for the position just like any other position. And if you are able to do the position and you get selected, you would go through our two-week motor school. Upon completion of that school, you would get the opportunity to ride this along with the other vehicles in our motor fleet. All right, guys, we are about to get stormed on. Again, thank you to our motormen back here hanging out. Thank you to Casey for driving me around. Gents, we got to sign off. It, it is it's going to ring. Uh, you know how to sign off. See you when I see you. And if I don't see you, well, then I'll see you because we're about to get rained on. We're out. Gotta let out the beast Revolutionary guy Let out the streets Locked in a cage I'ma let out the Let out the Let out the Wake up Get out the sheets We came for one man Forget my peace You take the west I'll take on the east I'ma put him in a cage Never let out the Let out the Let out the yeah. I hear him chat to the noise Move too quick Can't stop for the talking I hear him chat with the boys Man so tough But man's keep walking yeah. Just too sharp with the prize White girls Let her tell me I'm awesome Yeah Hot like fire on the pan If you wanna touch Mount Fiju's costume